Hello and welcome back to Measure Theory. As always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady. And today's topic is the product measure and Cavalieri's principle. Both topics are connected and are very important even in the case if you just want to integrate in R2 or R3. And for this reason, I want to show you here the general framework. If we now start with the product measure, the easiest case would be if we take two measure spaces. Therefore, we have a set X here, a sigma algebra A and a measure mu. As said before, we need a second measure space and therefore I take here an index one. And the same way we take the other measure space with an index two. Now what we can do is to visualize the set x1 as a green line and the set x2 as this red line. And now in order to define the product measure, we need to create a new measure space that lives on the Cartesian product of x1 with x2. Therefore we need a new sigma algebra, which we can just now call A, and a measure which we can also just call mu. And this mu is then our so-called product measure. Now let's visualize what we want to measure with this new measure mu. Here you see the Cartesian product. Hence a subset where we want to know the volume of lives in this coordinate system. The easiest case would be such a rectangle. And such a rectangle is defined by one subset in x1 and another one in x2. Therefore, we can call this one here by a1 and the other one by a2. Hence, the rectangle is now given by a1 times a2. And from this thing, we want to know the volume. However, if you now look back to the picture, you know that the length of the rectangle should be exactly the measure of this set a1. And the same way, the width of the rectangle should be the measure of A2. And now you can say that a meaningful product measure should measure a rectangle just by length times width. This means for our formula here that the measure of A1 times A2 is exactly the measure of A1 times the measure of A2. Okay, so this is what we want for the product measure. It should fulfill this formula for all rectangles formed by a measurable set in x1 and one in x2. However, at this point, we didn't talk about another ingredient here, which is the sigma algebra A here. And this is what we can do now. And of course, it is called the product sigma algebra. The first thing we could try is to consider all possible rectangles here. And we denote this set as curved A1 times curved A2. So the Cartesian product of both sigma algebras. Okay, so this one is just a set of all possible rectangles in this sense. Here we have a short sketch. So we take one measurable set A1 out of this sigma algebra and another one A2 out of the other sigma algebra. However, we immediately see that the rectangles don't form a sigma algebra. Because we can just take another one here with different measurable sets A1, A2. And then we see that the union is not a rectangle. Hence, we don't have a sigma algebra, but we still have a semi-ring of sets. Okay, so that's a thing we could use later. But now for defining the product sigma algebra, we know what to do. We can just take the sigma algebra that is generated by the rectangles here. So you see, this is very easy. Now we have our product sigma algebra. And then we can also formally define our product measure. We can just say define mu such that it fulfills our product rule on the rectangles. Or in other words, we have this one as a product for the rectangle given by 
a1 times a2. And at this point now we can just use Carol Theodore's extension theorem. About this I have a whole other video and we learned there that if we can define a measure on a semi-ring we can extend that definition to the whole sigma algebra that is generated by this semi-ring. And with this procedure we get our product measure. However, we also learned in the video about Carol Theodore's extension theorem that this definition is not unique. This means that we could in general have multiple product measures that fulfill this rule for the rectangles. Well, now I want to close this video with the case where we have in fact uniqueness. So let's write that down as a proposition. Indeed what is helpful is the case when the two measures are sigma finite. And please recall in the case of the normal Lebesgue measure on Rn we know that this one is sigma finite. And now in this case we find exactly one measure with the wanted property. But of course it's much more interesting to know what the measure does on subsets that are not rectangular. So here you see an example of a subset which is indeed not rectangular, it's a triangle. However, in general we just want to measure an arbitrary subset M in this Cartesian product as long as it lies in this sigma algebra. To get this nice formula here we can just look at the y-axis here and take one point and maybe we call this point now y. Now I want to look at the section here in the set M, so exactly this line, and I want to take the corresponding x1 values. And exactly this set here I want to call M with index y. Of course I can also write down the formal definition which would be all lowercase x1 in the capital X1 with the property that x1 and y as a pair lies in M. Still I think the picture here is more helpful to visualize what happens. Now the formula tells you, okay, just measure the length of this line, so we measure this in the measure mu1 in x1, which means mu1 of my. Okay, we have chosen one y here, but of course this was arbitrary. We could also have chosen this one, for example, and then we would have gotten this line here. So what we really want is to take all the y's at once and then just build up the whole set with these red lines here. In the formula this just means that we integrate over x2, so we integrate over all possible y's, which means we have here d mu 2 of y. And this thing now gives you the volume of the subset M measured with the product measure. And I already told you the visualization should be you have a lot of lines here and you sum them all up. But this summation is then given as an integral. Okay and now the only thing that is missing here is that you have the same formula just with switched walls. In the visualization this means you can draw the line parallel to the y-axis or the x2 axis here and then sum them up in the integration. Yeah, so you switch the walls and we get the formula here with x1, mu2 mx and integration over mu1 x. And the same way as before we can now define m index x as all the points that lie on the y-axis, so x2 in capital X2 that fulfill x with x2 lies in m. What you have seen now, namely calculating the volume of a set m which is not a simple rectangle, by using one integration and both measures m1 and m2, this is called Cavalieri's principle. 
and the visualization should always be in this sense. So you have sections in one direction and then you integrate in the other direction. But of course, this is much easier to understand if you see some examples. Therefore, in an upcoming video, I will show you some examples and there you see the calculation. Okay, I think that's good enough for today. So thanks for listening and see you next time. Bye.